Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Radiant Moon Tarot. I am so excited today. Uh, we have an unboxing for you of the spectacular kind. This is a Kickstarter that I had backed way back at the end of October of 2023. Today is June 1st of 2024, and I've finally received my product. I knew this was going to take a while to come in, um, so I've been very patient waiting for it. Uh, but I literally just got home. Home from picking this up from the FedEx office. This is the Hellenic Teetotum or Teetotum, however you want to say it. And it is tarot, but it's in the form of figurines. So if you're intrigued, stay tuned because we're going to unpack this massive box that I have that weighs a ton and go through the book and see what we've got in here. So these are Hellenic figurines that are associated with the major arcana in the tarot and they come with, um, they come with a holder and they're handmade, hand cast. It was quite spendy for me for this, but you can see we've got uh, some things in the book there. I actually don't even remember what kind of, what color I got. So I'm going to have to go back and check. This is all the way from Egypt. And like I said, handmade, hand cast, uh, hand designed. Uh, this is going to be a very rare item because I think there's only uh, I think there was only about 35 backers on this one, right? But he, the guy raised double the money that he was looking for. And I was just super intrigued by this. And it's just something different, something unique. And um, I hope you're excited as I am for the journey. So I'm going to put this on pause for a minute because this box is really big, really heavy. I can't work with it in front of the camera. Really, I'm standing up at the moment and it's still tall. So I'm going to take everything out of the box, put it on my desk here, and then we can unravel things one by one. Word to the wise, this is probably going to be a little bit of a longer video. Um, so I'll see where we're at at the end, and I might do like another second quickie one um, if you want to uh, just have like that quick little look at it for some instant gratification. So stay tuned for that, and I don't even know at this point what that's going to look like. So when I come back, we're going to see all the bits and pieces on my desk. Hang tight. All right, I am back. Okay, so I managed to get this stuff out of the box. And let me tell you, this stuff is heavy. Now, also, my box was also opened by Customs. Of course it was, right? Um, uh, so a few of the things in here are a little bit unraveled. And um, I'm not sure if Customs is the one through there digging around in my box. Is the one that uh, actually crinkled caused some of my papers in here to be crinkled. But uh, if it's if it's not them, you know what? Let's blame let's blame customs anyway. Um, so anyway, so like I said, we've got the book in here, and we will come back to this. Um, but I do very much appreciate that there's a book with this because you know it would really be nice to know how to work with all of these. But we'll reference that, and it is in color and it is glossy, so that's nice. Now we have. For here, we've got a very nice note from the creator of this. Dear Victoria, thank you for backing my first crowdfunding campaign. I am grateful for backers like you who made it all possible. I'm happy to present you with your reward, the Hellenic Teetotum. Now that the project has come to fruition, I'm eager to hear your thoughts on the reward you selected. Your feedback is invaluable to me as I strive to improve and deliver the best, best, best possible product. And I will say that, you know, sometimes, you know, you hear complaints from people um, about their Kickstarter projects and they never hear back or anything like that or they're hard to get a hold of. This guy has been awesome with updates every single step of the way. So if this intrigues you, uh, keep an eye out on Kickstarter for anything else that he does in the future. I certainly will, at least at this point, right? Of course, I haven't unpacked the product yet. So, uh, so hopefully we do, uh, we hopefully everything does stay ticky boot tickety boo. This is my first product. So please take a moment to let me know your thoughts on the reward whether it's a comment on the quality, functionality, suggestions to use different deities or certain cards or any suggestions for improvement, I welcome any feedback. Please handle the figurines with care to minimize the chance of breaking at the thin sections. If you post about the teetotum on social media, I appreciate if you share it with me. Best regards, Ahmed Bader, I'm going to say. I'm probably saying that wrong. Marsam Studio and his socials. I'll show you his socials down there just in case you want to know. So in this box, we do have uh, these papers here. Now, my understanding with these, 
um, from the campaign itself and some updates is that this can uh, just be like versions of like spreads, like what you would use with cards. So this particular one here, you could probably um, pull out four figurines out of that. One, two, three, four. Oh, I can't count five. So <laughs> and put them on here. We got background, expected outcome, challenge. So you probably read them this way. Background, challenge, ultimate goal, expected outcome, and clarification. So uh, so you got some just a little bit of you know ideas there for working with this particular system. Um, so it's a little handy. These are the ones that are just a little bit, uh, a little bit squished and curled. Uh, I'm guessing that they probably didn't, probably didn't get sent that way. So it's probably due to that inspection that opened my box. Um, anyways, I'll just put it underneath some heavy books and flatten it out. It's not a huge deal. It's not a huge problem. Now, this is the really heavy piece underneath this. This is the base of this thing. And when I'm saying that this guy hand casted this stuff, um, I am not kidding. This is not cheap. So here is our reveal. So this is where the figurines are going to be stored. Move a couple of these out of the way. So we've got a slot for each figurine in that. And oh, good Lord. It is so heavy. You have no idea. Look at the detail on this. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And now remember, of course, which color that I chose. I chose the bronze because I like the bronze, I like the copper look to it. But it's like super gorgeous on here. It's all 3D. I'm sure you can see that. I've got some. Uh, oh, my goodness. I've got. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It is so heavy. Um, so I'm just going to take I'm going to take the um, the stuff off of it. Because uh, this thing spins uh, is my understanding. So if I can do it without um, knocking the camera over, that would be great. Come on. There we go. Okay. Wait till I flip that around. Yeah, it looks like the base does spin around. So that's handy. And then I guess you can just spin it around. But anyways, but that is the base of this thing. It is big. It is bold. It is beautiful. And, um, man, oh man, it's quite the, quite the paperweight. <laughs> so it's probably not going to be able to go in the bookcase that I thought that it was going to be able to go into. <gasps> but look at that. There we go. We've got the spinny spinnies. Okay. So now that we've got the base out of the way, <laughs> sorry to hear me grunting as I'm trying to move it. Let's start opening some of the figurines, shall we? And they are all, of course, very nicely individual packed, uh, to keep them very safe. And so we'll talk about now. I'm not going to know, obviously, uh, the second that I open these exactly which ones they are. Oh, except that it says it. There we go. And this one is I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. I'm just going to pull this down. There we go. That might be better for you. So this is Hermes, Hermes, however you want to uh, call him there. Very nice. These, thank goodness, are a little bit lighter than uh, than what the base is. So they're very easy to hold and uh, they stand up. Hey, look at that. There we go. They stand up very nicely. So I'm going to put Hermes back here. Now, how is he supposed to go? I'm not sure. I think they go that way so that you don't know. Oh, you can't see. Hold on. There we go. I think they go in this way like that there like that so that you can't see ah kind of like having your deck facing down and then you pull out whichever one you want so that's very interesting there so I think to shorten this video what I'm going to do is unravel each one of these because it's going to take me a while and you know what I don't want you to be bored um so I'm going to pause the video a second time I apologize and I'm going to unravel these because I mean this is the boring part for you right I mean you might enjoy it but Anyway, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to unravel them all and then we'll just focus on the important stuff, which is looking at the product. All right, we're back. I'm glad I paused the video for that one, man. That was, oh, that was quite the, quite the uh, work trying to get all those unraveled. So, but here we are. I've got my little tarot army 
um, all in front of me here. And let's have a look at these figurines because as I'm opening them and looking at them, of course, I notice some more details about them. So we're just going to grab them at random. I moved this to the side because it was just a little bit too much in the way. And let's get our buddy Neptune over here, Poseidon, as I should say. Uh, so this is Poseidon. We've got his little trident there. We've got the figurine there. Uh, Chaos. And he is the tower. And if you can see that, maybe I need to put on my flash. There you go. That might be a little bit better for you. I'm not sure. Anyways, so he represents the tower, Poseidon there, and a little bit of chaos, right? So gorgeous figurine. And I'm just going to plop them into this holder at random. And then when I'm done, uh, we'll go to the book and we'll read one or two out of there. And then maybe we'll just give this a little spin and take one out and see what the message is. Anyways, we've got our lovely buddy Zeus up here for us. Authority is the message and he is the emperor. And that's what he represents in this. Oops. And where are we here? We have Demeter representing completion and the world. Plop her over here in the front, I think. Here we go. We have Nike, Victory, and the Chariot. Gorgeous. I'm being careful putting them in here because they just fit. So it's a nice little, nice little fit on there. We've got Heracles, 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 Heracles in here. <laughs> there we go, representing courage and the strength card. So like I said, each one of these uh, is corresponding back to one of the major arcana. There's 22 figurines, right, for the 22 major arcana. We have Dionysus here. Beginnings. And this is the Fool. Eris. Eris. Transition. Death card. They've got these things have like a little bit of a, uh, what should I say? Uh, they're made to look like they're old, right? They've got just this, um, uh, I don't know what you would call it. Oh, I had the word a second ago and it's gone. Anyways, um, tarnishing, not really tarnishing. Anyways, you know what I mean? Uh, it's made to, so the new looks a little bit old. Here's Athena representing some wisdom in the Hierophant. Beautiful. Themis. But you can't guess what card that one is. It's very self-explanatory on this one. Anyways, Truth. And that is, of course, the Justice card. And we have the mighty Aphrodite coming in here. A little bit of love, harmony, representing the lover's card. He's got some really good detail in here as Cupid. Uh, he's got some really good detail in here. Like you can even see like the crown, beautiful crown, the robes, all 3D, beautiful. I have a little kitten that just appeared beside me, very interested in what I'm doing here. We have Artemis, Illusion, the moon. Oh, lily pad. No, 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 no. Okay, well, if she just stays still, she can stay. Anyways, there's the moon with Artemis on there. Look at that, it's beautiful. 
like really pretty. Stay right where you are there, Lily. This is Lily, by the way. <laughs> uh, we have Tish or Teich, yeah, depending how you say it. I would say it Tish. Anyways, it looks like, what is he holding? Or is she holding? I'm not sure. Fortune, holding fortune. There we go. And this is the Wheel of Fortune. Okay, you're leaving. <laughs> Hold on. And of course, sorry about that. Of course, what did she knock over? Atlas, right? Atlas holding up the world. Look at that. Sacrifice. And the hanged man. I guess Atlas could have gone a couple of different ways, right? Considering Atlas is always shown like holding the world, right? You could also associate him maybe with the world, but we'll have a, have a read through the book when I get around to it and uh, see what, uh, see what is associated there. We have, where are we? Hecate. Balance. And that is the temperance card. Tarnishing, that's the word. There we go. <laughs> I had it. Uh, we have Elpis. Faith. And that is the star. Hephaestus. Reflection Judgment Medea. Look at the detail on this one. Holy moly. Not only do we have like all the detail of the robes coming down, but we even have the detail of the braids in her hair. Gorgeous, a gorgeous work. Anyways, Medea, Intuition, The Priestess. I would say, let me see, The Priestess. Well, I guess it depends on where you're from, but it's kind of missing an S. But anyways, minor, minor, minor little detail. Uh, let me see, does she go in there? There we go. We have Apollo. Joy, sun, Persephone, solitude, and that is the hermit. Almost done. Hera. Creativity. And the Empress. And we have Pan. Addiction. The devil. You ever seen Pan's Labyrinth? That was a creepy show. And finally, we're gonna bring back out our honey, our hub little buddy, thank you, honey, uh, Hermes out here, or Hermes, however you want to call him. Um, he is willpower, and that is the magician. So let's tap into our inner magician here, and I'm gonna pull out his explanation out of the book. So here's the book. And of course it is in color, nice thick pages, like thick pages. This is beautiful. And he will be, of course, at the beginning of the book. And here we go. So we've got Hermes the Magician. 
19th century. Um, this is, I think, um, let me just check. Yes, I think here, Bertel Thorvaldsen, 19th century. I think that is where the, um, where the statue has come from, where, what it represents. Um, let me just check. The Hellenic Tidotum is a reimagining of Major Arcana and Tarot. Instead of using a deck of cards for readings, 22 figurines of Greek gods representing the Major Arcana are used. Each of the Greek gods' story mirrors a trump card. Readings are done by choosing a spread as you would with regular tarot deck, shuffling the figurines by spinning the Tidotum, and drawing any number of figurines for your spread. Each figure or each figurine has three pieces of information engraved on the base. They are the deity's name, the tarot card it represents, and a keyword meaning of that card. Using the Greek deity's archetypical stories to represent the major arcana will allow you to gain deeper understanding of the tarot symbolism, as well as being a tool for exploring Greek mythology and spirituality. And of course, there is a lot of astrological and mythological association between astrology, tarot, other forms of divination, right? And there's all of this, it kind of all comes back full circle to a certain degree. So if you're not already familiar with some Greek mythology, um, you probably know or are familiar with a little bit more than what you maybe think, right? Even things like Aphrodite um, and things like that, you, you know, it's like, or things like Medusa, right? The one that no one ever talks about. Medusa connected with Algol, the demon star, right? And why head of snakes, right? Represents some eh, crazy stuff, right? Um, so it's the one of the things that a lot, some astrologers don't like to talk about because it's a little bit too dark, but we have to have the dark with the light, um, you know, but that's like Medusa, right? And if you know the story of Medusa, then you can see how it all ties back together. Um, Zeus was quite the little philanderer there. And uh, so there's a number of deities that are very much linked back to Zeus. So, um, you know, so uh, you'd be amazed if, you know, it, it, until you start reading these things and digging into them, you don't really quite realize exactly how much of this stuff you're already familiar with. Anyway, so um, it doesn't actually say what this association is, but considering the fool, um, Dionysus with the fool is Michelangelo 15th century. And that does look like a Michelangelo type figurine. So that's what I'm thinking that this is where they've come from. Um, seems to make sense to me. So anyway, let's read, uh, our buddy here, Hermes or Hermes. The magician tarot card and Hermes, the Greek, Greek god of communication, magic, and trickery share several significant parallels and connections. Here are a few ways in which the magician card relates to Hermes. Mastery of skills. The magician is often depicted as a figure with various tools and symbols representing the four elements, air, earth, fire, and water. This symbolism suggests mastery of different skills and the ability to manipulate the forces of nature. Similarly, Hermes was known as a master of many arts and skills, including language, writing, magic, and alchemy. Communication and messages. The magician card represents effective communication and the ability to convey ideas and messages. Hermes, as the messenger of the gods, was responsible for delivering divine messages and facilitating communication between the realms of gods and humans. Transformation and alchemy. The magician card is associated with transformation and the power to manifest desires. Hermes, as the god of alchemy and transformation, facilitated the exchange and transformation of ideas, goods, and souls. He was also believed to possess the ability to transmute substances and facilitate spiritual growth. Trickery and deception. The magician card can sometimes symbolize trickery and manipulation using skills and knowledge for personal gain. Similarly, Hermes was known for his mischievous nature and his reputation as a trickster god. He could be cunning and deceitful using his wit and cleverness to achieve his goals or to teach valuable lessons. Dual nature and meditation, the magician card often represents the balance of opposites, such as masculine and feminine energies, conscious and unconscious aspects, and the spiritual and physical realms. Hermes, 
as a god with dual nature, bridged different realms and mediated between gods and mortals, acting as a guide and facilitator. So there you go. And uh, we're not going to read out all of them. We'll be here, of course, until probably uh, next Tuesday. It'll be a very long video, right? But you can see how these are all in here, right? We've got Pan, the devil, right? We've got some associations, earthly desires and sensuality, wildness and liberation, shadow self and personal transformation, connection to nature and the animalistic, trickery and playfulness, right? So hello, Mr. Devil, right? Um, so yeah, so very cool, very cool indeed. Um, so I can't wait to work with this. But in the meantime, let's put our buddy here away. And there we go. Say goodbye. And I will, oh, good Lord, uh, move that over. <laughs> Sorry, it is super heavy. Anyways, um, and let's give this a spin. And I haven't cleansed it or anything like that yet, so I wouldn't normally work with things like this right away. But let's give it a spin. Look at that beautiful and let's just, I've got my eyes closed. I'm going to see where I land. How about here? And what did we choose? Elpis. Okay. And we've got the star. Oh, I love that I chose, oh my God, I love that I chose that one. Um, the star is uh, my card um, represented um, in astrology by Uranus, right? In the Greek mythology out of this uh, system here by Elpis. Um, I am an Aquarius, so, uh, and the star just happens to be one of my favorite uh, tarot cards. So that is absolutely beautiful. And of course, the star card does represent faith, hope, and inspiration. It can also represent the balance of energies between the universe and the earth, right? Bringing things um, to fruition sometimes also represents a nice energy of serendipity. Um, but it also represents blessings and um, things, you know, that you're dreaming of, right? And these things coming to fruition uh, creating abundance in your life and all these wonderful things. Super, super positive card. I love, love, love that that's the one that I happen to pick out of here, just out of random. I just, in my head, just said, what do I need to know right now? And there's one that represents. So love that. So what do you think of this? Are you one of the seemingly rare people that has it? Um, I will leave this guy's information in the description box. Um, I have no idea uh, if if he's going to make any more. I would assume that if this gets um, a lot of positivity from it, I would assume that maybe he will. Um, but I can't speak for someone that I don't know. <laughs> so anyways, as of right now, though, let me tell you, I had buyer's remorse with this thing a couple of times. because It was very expensive. Um, I forget how much the Kickstarter was, but of course it was in U.S. dollars. And uh, uh, when you convert it to Canadian dollars, which is where I'm based, right at the southern tip, but just across the border from Washington. And, um, you know, that, uh, you know, increased, you know, of course, the, the dollar value. It's easy to get carried away in U.S. dollars. Um, and then, of course, there was shipping costs on top of that and then duty on top of that. And, of course, plus the length of time that it was taking to come in. I'm like, oh, my God, should I have really made this purchase? <laughs> but it was a present to myself. Um, as a reward to myself for, for something that I had accomplished that took a long time and that I was very proud of. So, um, you know, so it is a present for me. So I'm, I'm very, very glad that I have it, especially now that it's here. It's high quality. It's got really good energy with it. Um, and I know that I'm going to love it. And this is going to be a little bit of a centerpiece when I figure out where to put it somewhere. Uh, I think I'm going to put it in my personal, my personal divination space is probably where it's going to be. And then when I do readings with it for you guys, I'm probably going to do the readings over there, I would say. Anyways, I would love to know your feedback and your comments down below. Um, let me know what you think of this. And uh, of course, go and check this guy out. Um, and this, I'm going to leave his credentials down there too. Thank you for watching, guys, and I will see you later. Bye.